Thank you, Carol. I guess we all know what we're going to be reading. Matthew 14, starting at verse 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of, hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and they already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me. He said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. So our title for our sermon today, uh, though it didn't make it into your bulletin, which was my fault because I forgot to put it in the email that goes into the bulletin, I apologize for that, uh, is, Are You Hungry? So as we begin uh, and head into August this year, we're going to take a few weeks in our sermons and discuss the idea of what it means to be seeking God. And in this first week of our series, we're going to be thinking about what it means to hunger, and how we wrestle with our hunger in this world. Now, being hungry is an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? How do you, we describe being hungry in our lives? We say things like, oh, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, right? Or I'm so hungry I could eat my hat. That might be an Oklahoma thing. I don't know that you guys say that, but it's something we say. Um, in our own family, we describe uh, being hungry at times as being hangry. And if you don't know what that is, it is where you are hungry, but, you, uh, but because you are hungry, you start to get agitated by everyone and everything around you. So you are hungry and angry at the same time, which equals being hangry. Now, one of my children gets more hangry than the others. Um, I will not name her, uh, but she does. She, and she admits this. She said, she'll say, guys, I'm getting hangry. We need to get something to eat. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, pastor, we are Methodists. We don't do hunger. We do potlucks, right? We're never hungry. We're always eating something. That's uh, a common joke about the Methodist people, right? Um, funnily enough, after church day at Klein's Grove, they have a picnic. Um, so we'll be, we'll be eating after there. Um, but when you think about hunger, we think about the pains in our stomach that we get when we haven't eaten for a while, right? And we consider that to be hungry in our society. Friends, that is not real hunger. Now, I have no doubt that there are some of us that have experienced what it means to be truly hungry for food in this world. But by and large, most of us have not. Or if we have, it has been because of our own choosing. So, for example, choosing to fast for a time from food. And that is not the type of hungry I am talking about today. I'm not talking about the slight discomfort that comes from not eating. The hunger I am talking about is the one that if you don't take care of it, then you will die. See, there's a difference between wanting to eat something and truly hungering for it. You can think of it this way. There's a difference between wanting something and needing something. I kind of think we've lost the ability 
in our society to tell the difference between those two ideas. You know, we are blessed to live in a society that has so much. We have the ability to get just about anything that we want. Oh, we might have to save for it. We might have to delay for a time getting what we want, but we are able to get just about anything that we want. So if you're hungry, go to the store or go to a restaurant. If you want a new car, go buy one. You want a new pair of shoes? Well, there's 15 stores in this area, at least, that you can buy them. You want another answer to a question? Chances are you have a machine in your pocket right now that if you pull it out and type it in, you will get the answer. Well, hopefully you'll get the right answer. You see, in a world where things are readily available to us all the time with minimal effort, we've lost the ability to tell the difference between what we want and what we need. We've lost the ability to tell if we're just a little hungry for something or if we are ravenously hungering after something. And in our scripture for today, we find a few examples of what hunger is, what it is to hunger, and what it means to try and take care of those needs. What we'll see is that the people in our scripture were hungering for what they needed, not just wanting after something. But when we hear that story that we hear in the scripture today, we often think about this miracle that Jesus performed. Like we, we get really wrapped up in the miracle. So much so that at times we forget that there are other parts of this story we can look at. But we think about how amazing it is that Jesus was able to take the five loaves and the two fish and feed what we speculate to be at least 10,000 people. Uh, I say speculate because we only have the count of the men that were there. We know there were at least 5,000 men, but we're also told that there were women and children besides, so it's not a big jump to think 10,000 people. And we get lost in the awe of such an amazing feat. And don't get me wrong, we should, right? We should be amazed at this. We should look at this story of what Jesus did with wonder and give it the, the amazement that it truly deserves. But there are other instances of hunger in this story that we miss because of that miracle. I want to take a look at those today. See, the first instance of hunger that we miss is actually with Jesus himself. In the beginning of the scripture, we're told that Jesus left and went to a deserted place in order to be by himself. You see, Jesus was hungry for some alone time. Now, if you have small children, or you remember what it was like to have small children, this might hit home for you. Hungry for some alone time. You know, Jesus was constantly being followed everywhere that he went because of the miracles that he was performing and the messages that he was giving to people. Do you remember what it was like when you couldn't go anywhere without a kid following you around? Maybe you're still living that. You know, you just need five minutes <laughs> to get your head together or just five minutes of silence and uh, maybe not to hear someone yell out, Mom! 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 In our house, it's Mom. They never yell for Dad. I don't know why. Um, Carlin likes to joke that they'll walk directly by me to go to her to ask them to get, get, her, get something out of the kitchen for them when I'm standing in the kitchen. You know... It's difficult if you're being yelled at every few minutes to, to take care of someone's needs. But I think Jesus probably felt that too. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, feed me. Jesus, teach me. Over and over and over, everywhere that he went. And it had to be a lot to deal with. So why would Jesus want to be alone? Well, besides the need to recover, because remember, he was both divine and human. When he went to be alone, it was almost always so that he could pray. See, he was hungry to connect with God. He needed time alone in quiet to just sit and be with his father. I think we miss 
that hunger in our own lives sometimes. See, we're really good at coming to God with our requests and our wants, but I think we could all improve on taking time just to be with God. That is, I think that we need to be feeling in our lives, feeling that need, so that we can seek God the way that we need to. We need to be recognizing the hunger that we have in our own souls to connect with God. And we need to be acknowledging the fact that without God in our lives, we are missing something. You see, we have a need to connect with God. That is not a want in our lives. We might think that we want to grow closer to him. But if we want to have truly peace, to truly have peace, if we need to have true peace in our lives, we have to begin thinking of it as just that, a need to connect with God. Something that we must address in our lives in order to truly live. The next part of hunger that we often miss in this scripture is the hunger that we should serve others. In the scripture, when the multitude follow Jesus, even though he's trying to get away, when they follow him into the deserted place, the apostles find themselves in what they believe is a tough situation. How are we going to take care of all these people? We don't have any money to buy them food. Even if we did have the money to buy them food, there is no place to buy food here, and it is getting late. Jesus, please just send these people away. Tell them to go get some food on their own, uh, uh, and then they can come back in the morning. That way they, they are fed. Oh, and by the way, so we can get some rest too and also probably eat as well, Jesus. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? You're sitting around with folks at your house. It's getting late and you're ready for a snack in bedtime. And you keep hinting that, hey, it's getting late. I got to get up in the morning, but they just keep talking. You ever found yourself in that situation? No, you guys are so welcoming that you would never think, hey, I got to go to bed now. Right. But it can be a frustrating thing at times. Sometimes you, uh, people just don't understand that. But Jesus tells the apostles, no, they don't need to go away. You need to feed them. Can you imagine what they must have been thinking? How? How are we going to feed them, Jesus? We don't have anything. I'm really tired. I just want to go to bed. We've been traveling. Can't they just come back in the morning and then we'll take care of them? You know, in Scripture, we don't get to hear the grumblings of the apostles very often. Um, I think that has a lot to do with it. A lot of the apostles wrote a lot of parts of the Scripture, and they probably left out the grumblings that they may have had here and there. But I don't think it's a big leap in thought to imagine that some, if not all of them, were pretty frustrated in this moment. But we get that way too, don't we? What do you mean you want me to help those people? Can't they help themselves? I'll help them, but shouldn't they be showing me the right amount of gratitude to me for my work? We can't afford to keep helping them. It's time for them to help themselves. But you see, we as a church, we must be hungry to serve others. We have to be one that is willing to meet the needs of others, even though at times it can be frustrating. When I think about helping others in the name of Jesus, I am reminded that he helped me first. Meaning that I remind myself that I am not worthy of his grace, and yet he freely gave it to me. So how can I look at someone else and say they are not worthy of my help if that is the case? You see, we truly have to have a hunger to serve others then in our service to them. We will find we are seeking God. When we seek to help others to see him, we are seeking to see him more clearly ourselves. Now, finally, I think we miss the hunger of the crowd that followed Jesus. Not the physical need to eat, but the need to follow him. You know, if they'd have been more concerned about what they were eating that day, instead of following Jesus, they'd have stopped where they were and ate, but instead they followed him to that deserted place. You know, they say 
to him, Lord, I know you're going to be alone. I know you're heading into this place that's deserted, but I need you so badly that I must follow. When was the last time that you felt you would follow Jesus into a deserted place? We love to claim that we are following him when things are going well, but when we turn around and ask where he is when things are hard. But when we find ourselves we must, in that situation, we must ask ourselves this question in those difficult places. Did we follow him in the first place, or did we head to another path of our own choosing because we thought it would be easier? Well, if that is the case, then it's time to turn around and to seek him. If we can say that we did follow him and we still ended up in a tough place, well, then why are you worried? You see, he is there with you. Have you considered that he will take care of you, that he will feed you as he did the multitudes in the deserted place? Now, I know at times in our life when things are hard, when we're in that diffi those difficult places, it can be hard for us to think that way. But that is why we have faith. Now this week, as I thought about what it meant to be hungry and to hunger after something, I tried to take some time and consider what it is that I am hungry for in this world. And as I did, this is what I came up with. I am hungry for a world where justice is available to everyone, not just the ones who can afford to buy it. I am hungry for a world where children can go to school and not worry about what will happen to them and have homes that they can come home to each day and not worry what will happen to them. I am hungry for a world where people don't have to choose between buying medicine and food. I am hungry for a world where people that claim Jesus Christ as their savior live out their lives in the ways that he taught them to, where they love God and their neighbor, where they don't allow petty differences about insignificant things to interfere with loving one another and doing the work of the kingdom. Now, I know that a lot of that in our world today seems to be far-fetched. Seems like a pie-in-the-sky sort of thing to hope for and hunger for. But we serve a God that makes the impossible possible. So I hunger most of all for a world where we seek out that God and all we say and all we do. So as we move forward, let us try our best to seek God in all that we do. Let us have faith that he will take care of us in our hungry times. And let us do our best to help others end their hunger in this world by coming to know him. My challenge for you this week is this. Consider what it is that you're hungering for in this world. If it's not God, if it's something else, then change what you're hungering for. Amen.